Hello, and welcome to this video. One of the classic debates in the larger scale model train world is which is better, American Flyer 3 16th scale 2 rail S gauge or Lionel 1 48th scale 3 rail O gauge. Of course, before World War II, American Flyer was also made in 3 rail O gauge. These are a few examples from my collection. But after A.C. Gilbert took over American Flyer production in 1937, Work started on 3 16th scale S gauge, also sometimes called 1 64th scale, and after the war, that was American Flyer's most popular scale, although they also made some HO trains. Even though the AC Gilbert Company is, sadly, no longer in business, S gauge trains are still produced and have a good following. The two rail versus three rail debate is a bit in the past and was hopefully always good natured but it still exists to some degree today. Within the vintage American Flyer hobby, the big debate has been about link couplers, shown here, versus knuckle couplers, shown here. This picture shows the Pike Master coupler that A.C. Gilbert made in the later years, but aside from showing it, I don't plan to discuss it in this video. This is a picture of my dad's American Flyer set, which I grew up with. Since I recalled having many problems with the link couplers when we were growing up, I converted most of the cars to knuckle couplers when I took over the set about 20 years ago. I've regretted that ever since, and here's why. In this picture, the top two passenger cars are from my Silver Bullet set, and all have original link couplers. The two New Haven passenger cars below have conversion knuckle couplers. You can see the huge difference in spacing. In this picture, the top two cars have original link couplers, the middle two cars have original knuckle couplers, and the bottom two cars have conversion knuckle couplers. Again, there's quite a difference with the conversion knuckle couplers. I have one freight train and two passenger trains that either I or a previous owner changed to conversion knuckle couplers, and I'm considering restoring all of them to link couplers. I'm not criticizing those who use conversion couplers. I might continue to use a few of them myself. But now that I know more about link couplers, I would like to get more trains back to their original spacing between cars. I'm now going to take a few minutes to tell you some other lessons I've learned about working with both link and knuckle couplers. There are some other good videos available about couplers, so I'm going to try to take what I learned from them and add a few thoughts of my own. I also need to stress that I'm talking about Gilbert era couplers, not later or current versions. Link couplers were used from 1946 until the early 1950s. The first link couplers didn't have any weights, which proved to be a problem. American Flyer added several different types of round weights during the next years. The first key about link couplers is that they need to be able to move freely like this. There are at least two ways to loosen them up when they get stuck, as this one is. One way is with a blow dryer. This helps evaporate the secretion that is a result of a chemical that was put in the plastic when it was first mixed. The purpose of this chemical was to make it easier for the coupler to come out of the mold. As you will see, it doesn't take long for the heat from a blow dryer to fix the problem. You can also use a soldering iron to heat the pin that holds the link in place by putting the soldering iron right here and warming up that pin until the link drops. Either way, sometimes the fix is permanent and sometimes it's only temporary. I have two link couplers right now that are fine after I use the blow dryer, but after a while they're stiff again. In these cases, you really have no choice but to remove the pin Clean out the hole with dish soap, mineral oil, or alcohol, and reinstall it. Being flexible helps the couplers respond to uneven places in the track but it's also important if you want to use an uncoupler like I'm showing here. 
As the cars go over the uncoupler, you push the button, the metal slats come up, and the car is uncoupled. Here's an example. And again in slow motion. I have several of these on my layout. The second thing that's important is to have the couplers level and even with each other. If they hang too low, then they can come uncoupled when they go over a switch, crossing, or bump. If they're not even with the accompanying coupler, then any uneven pressure can cause them to uncouple. It's also helpful to have them level horizontally. As you can see in this picture, you can use the axle as a guide to help level the bar on the coupler. I found that sometimes a certain coupler will match up better with some couplers than others. In fact, sometimes just turning a car around can make a difference. It takes a lot of trial and error, but over time, I managed to find cars with link couplers that work well together, and I arranged the consists in this manner. I have five trains that use all link couplers. One is a passenger train with my silver bullet. For this train, I use colored tape, like this, to show how the cars should be connected together. In longer freight trains, like I have with this Royal Blue, there aren't enough colors of tape, so I mark them like this using masking tape. The front of each car is marked, as well as the order the cars should be in. As long as I connect the cars in this manner, I rarely have an uncoupling problem. Yes, it takes time to work this out, but it ends up saving a lot of time later on when I'm running the trains. That doesn't mean I can't use different combinations, but I know this combination will be reliable, which makes running the trains more enjoyable. If all of these fail, then there are several more things you can try. You can use a small rubber band, or in this case, a small transparent ponytail, and connect it over the weights like this. Of course, you won't be able to use an uncoupler when you do this. Another option I use in only very rare cases is to file a small notch into the coupler, as you can see here. I use this three-sided file to do that. A very small notch can make a big difference, and you can still use this coupler with an uncoupler. Some purists might not like this, but I recall reading a while ago that the American Flyer trains that ran on the layout in the Gilbert Hall of Science had their couplers modified to ensure they couldn't uncouple. This was necessary because they ran all day and were lightly monitored, but I figure that if some modifications were good enough for the Hall of Science, then they're good enough for my basement. But the strategies I mentioned earlier have worked so well that, out of over 50 link couplers, I've notched only three, and I don't remember the last time I banded two couplers together. In the end, the point I want to make is that link couplers can be very reliable. As with link couplers, having knuckle couplers level and even with each other is important for a good connection. It seems to me that the biggest problem is caused by these weights that hang down below the coupler. When the weight is down properly, then the coupler is locked, and when it's pushed up, the coupler opens. These short clips show how these couplers work with an uncoupler. These weights can be really sensitive and can slide up if they hit switches, crossings, or uneven areas. Holding onto the rear axle of the truck and carefully pushing the stem up with your fingers or pliers so the weight isn't hanging so low will often help if you don't go too far. I didn't actually bend it in this video because it's not necessary on this car, but I think you can still get the idea. Even though that will often help, I still have a few couplers that habitually open up unexpectedly. I haven't been able to find a way to tighten or adjust the couplers, so, when necessary, I use a different method to solve this problem. I first tried wrapping some florist wire around the shaft between the weight and the coupler. Of course, this coupler can no longer be used with an uncoupler, but I only need a few cars to work with the uncouplers, so that isn't a problem for me. But the wire is a very cumbersome method so I now use poster putty, which I roll up and stuff into that gap. I haven't yet found black poster putty, 
So I use this putty and could use a marker to make it black if I want to. The important thing is that it works and doesn't permanently alter the coupler. You barely notice the putty when the car is going around the track and I can take it out whenever I want to. I also want to mention that I find this problem to be much more common in conversion couplers than in the original knuckle couplers. So those are some of my thoughts and hopefully you found one idea that could be helpful. Uncoupling can be very frustrating, but there are possible solutions you can try. I encourage you to check out videos from other hobbyists to also benefit from their collective experience. Thanks for watching.